passage from Acts, written by the same author who wrote the Gospel of Luke, indicates how the disciples changed. At the time of the crucifixion and immediately after, the disciples were in hiding and too frightened to do anything. After the gift of the Holy Spirit, they became a bold and adventurous group of people. Here is one of the incidents that occurred. This happens after the apostles had been warned about teaching about Jesus. It's Acts chapter 5, verses 27 through 32, and this excerpt is taken from the book, The Message. Bringing them back, they stood them before the high council. The chief priest said, didn't we give you strict orders not to teach in Jesus' name? And here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are trying your best to blame us for the death of this man. Peter and the apostles answered, it's necessary to obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, the one you killed by hanging him on a cross. God set him on high at his side, Prince and Savior, to give Israel the gift of a changed life and sins forgiven. And we are the witnesses to these things. The Holy Spirit, whom God gives, up, gives to those who obey him, corroborates every detail. Praise God for this, the word of God for everyone. Thanks be to God. I thought to, we should remember today, I've repeated it several times, that Easter is still on. It's easy to forget to say, well, we did it, so it's over, but it's not not in our faith. And today's gospel lesson is a reflection that Easter is not over. It takes place, it's from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, and I have to admit it's one of my favorite passages of resurrection experiences, the road to Emmaus. Jesus meets two of his followers on the resurrection day on Easter Sunday. And the account goes like this. The same day, two of them were walking to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all the things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them. But they were not able to recognize who he was. Jesus asked, what's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They stood there long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, Cleophas by name, said, are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happened during the last few days? And Jesus said, what has happened? They said, the things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene. He was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in word and deed, blessed by both God and the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death, and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since this happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty just as the women said but they didn't see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, so thick-headed, so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe all that the prophets said? Don't you see these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? Then Jesus started at the beginning with the book of Moses, and went on through all the prophets pointing out everything 
in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed, and Jesus acted as if he was going on, but they pressed him. Stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening. The day is done. So Jesus went in with them, and here is what happened. Jesus sat down at the table with them, taking the bread he blessed and broke, and gave it to them. At that moment, open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognized him, and then Jesus disappeared. Back and forth the two talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened up the scriptures for us? This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. As I already mentioned, I love this particular gospel account. But one wonders why didn't the disciples recognize Jesus? Well, if you've been crucified, I suspect that changes your appearance. That's not a good experience. But even more than that, uh, could it be that they saw Jesus out of context? I like to put it that way. When I see people out of context, I don't always know who they are. This week, Linda and I were in a restaurant in Nashua, and as was walking by a booth, someone said hello to me. And I looked and I started figuring out, who is this woman? <laughs> You've had that experience, I'm sure. Uh, and it finally came to me that she was the wife of a very good friend of mine, Paul, and uh, I still couldn't dig her name out, of course, out of my memory banks. Pressure does that to me. And, uh, but it was out of context. Many years ago, I was at a, a social gathering, and I was talking with this very friendly guy, and my mind was going a mile a minute, who is this? And one of my friends standing behind the man I was talking to was going like this. And I wondered if he had an affliction. <laughs> but finally it came to me, from here up, the teller at the drive-in window at the bank. Well, all I ever saw was, <laughs> right? And that happens to us. We see someone out of context where, where, we, where they are not where they normally are when we see them. Who are they? I know I know this person, but who are they? And you know another part of the problem for the disciples on the road to Emmaus may have been they were so focused on what had happened so intent on what they were talking about that they didn't recognize Jesus. I mean, what's happened is really traumatic, right? Their beloved spiritual leader has been crucified. And then this crazy story the women have come up with. I love the way they blame the women for it. <laughs> but some of the disciples went, they couldn't figure it out either. So they're, they're wondering, what is going on? This is so upsetting, so turns our world upside down. Well, what's going on? And that may have contributed to what, why, the, why these two followers, disciples of Jesus, didn't see him or recognize him, I should say. They may not have even seen him. You know, sometimes you can be so intent on what you're doing or talking about that you really don't notice what is around you. And someone will say, oh, did you see that police car go by with the lights on? What police car? We're so intent on where we are and what we're doing. There's an old saying, I've always loved it because I think there's a lot of truth to it. 
one should always keep their minds focused on the task to be accomplished. But when you're up to your neck in alligators, it's hard to remember you're supposed to drain the swamp. True? You know? Life catches up with you. And that's what happened here, I think. And it's not only with the disciples not recognizing Jesus on the road, it happens to us that we lose our focus. I'm sure many of you know the old story about the life-saving station, where they had the boat to go out onto the water to save people who were in trouble, boats that were sinking. And they had a great thing going. But then they decided, you know, sometimes they came down during storms because they knew trouble would be coming, and they built a little shack for themselves. And that worked out nice because you could also bring people you rescued there out of the storm. But then someone said, you know, this is all right, but we ought to make it a little nicer. And so they did. And lo and behold, someone else said, you know, we really could make this a high-class joint. And lo and behold, they did. But then someone said, you know, there's a real problem with rescuing these people and then bringing them in there. The rescuers are in here and then the rescuers are wet and those, oh man, those people who have rescued, oh Lord, they're wet, dirty and all the rest of it. They're messing up our beautiful clubhouse. They had forgotten what their mission was, to go out and save lives. They lost focus. And that can happen to us in the church, too. We forget what we're about. To reach out to people with the love of Christ. To go out there and share that love in our daily lives. I think it's important that at times we notice what's happening around us. Those two disciples reclaimed their noticing, if you will, when Jesus broke the bread. Wow, that, that to me seems so neat. He broke the bread and suddenly they said, we know who you are, you're Jesus. And life really picked up for them. And I think we need those moments too. When we reclaim some of the wonder and the ma majesty and glory of God around us. The other well-known story about the older woman in a wheelchair at Atlanta airport going along at the break of day and sunrise out the window. And she looked out and said very loudly, Good work, God! Yeah. Good work, God. She reclaimed some of the wonder, some of the greatness of God around us. Sometimes it happens in reflection. The disciples, didn't we feel our hearts on fire? Yeah, it was there. In quiet. <clears throat> Sometimes we see God. We meet the risen Christ on the road. I happen to believe that God gives us nudges every once in a while. <coughs> That's the word I use for it, nudges. I've run into it a few times in my life where I get a nudge. One time I was going by, the most dramatic time it happened actually for me, I was going up a road, back country road, and uh, I got the nudge, stop and see Harry. Not that Harry, this is another one. <laughs> Same name, different person. And I don't want to see him. <laughs> he really wasn't one who attended church at all. I knew him, to be sure. But, uh, OK, 
okay, you got the nuts. I stopped and knocked on the door and looked in the, of course, the back door in New England. You don't go in the front door, uh, right? And I looked in the window and there he was on the floor. Good thing I stopped. He was still alive, thank God. And I didn't have to do anything too dramatic, thank God again. But the nudge came, the push that calls us to something. To become aware most often of other people. You know that person you pass every day but don't really see? And don't tell me you don't do that. We all do it. Oh yeah. I see them in the store. I see them on the street. Linda and I often talk as we drive down Main Street in Nashville. Oh yeah, that's one of the ones who shows up at our church. And not dressed in Easter finery. If you get my drift. People are around us who need the love and grace of God, if we but notice. Jesus said, as you have done to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you have done to me. In a sense, we are invited to see Christ on the road, whether it be to Emmaus, to Salem, Nashua, Rochester, name the place. We are invited to see the Christ and be open to his call, to his beckoning to us for this day. Amen.